period. And it's important not only because that is what's at risk, but it's important because if Connor pulls this off, he deserves that credit. He deserves it. The risk that he is taking, the courage that he is showing I don't care how many months and how many episodes I've come on here and told you guys he has no chance. Doesn't matter. The fact that he's going to walk out there and put it on the line and find out one way or the other in front of the entire world deserves credit. This fight goes down on August 26th, but when we wake up on August 27th, that the biggest upset in sports history happened. We got to give him his due. And I already know what the headlines are going to say. The headlines are going, well, but Floyd's old. You know, get, get him in there with Canelo. Get him in there with Triple G. They're going to try to bring somebody else forward. Fine. Great. But it's not fair to what he would have achieved. It's not fair to say, well, Floyd's 40. Well, Floyd's never lost. Well, Floyd hasn't done it in two years. Well, Connor hadn't done it in 29. Well, Connor was the bigger man. So what? This is the weight class Floyd fights at. He fights at 154 all the time. And when he doesn't, he's fighting at 149. And when he doesn't, he's fighting at 152. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So let's just call it what it is. The integrity of boxing is on the line. I do not think boxing is going to have a problem. I personally believe boxing is a real sport. But don't act like we haven't seen this before. When the UFC came out in 1993, they thought their base was going to be the martial artists of the world and the martial arts gyms. Every karate gym in town is going to be sitting down to watch this. Every Aikido gym, every Kung Fu gym, every Kempo gym in town. They're all going to be sitting down to watch this. They found out the exact opposite. We all thought people that knew karate or had a black belt in karate knew how to fight. We all thought that. Hollywood had taught us that. We all saw the clips going around, whether it's on television or on the Internet, of guys breaking boards and crushing bricks because they were masters of karate. We all saw what Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee did. We all thought that meant something, but the UFC in 1993 came out. We found out you could be a triple black belt in karate and take on some local tough guy from the bar and get your ass kicked. We all found out that what we believed to be true for self-defense and combat was not true. That karate didn't work. That it was not a form of self-defense at all. That Kempo and Kung Fu and Aikido and all of these traditional martial arts we heard about, just they just didn't convert to an actual fight. Those gyms and those schools and those participants did not watch the UFC. Because they did not like the reality that they were faced with. Which is this sport that we've done for years, that we've dedicated to, that we put our children in to get escalated through belt systems and rise up the ranks and break these boards and crush these bricks. Turns out it doesn't work. And everybody fell for it. It wasn't just you guys. It wasn't just me. Our leaders fell for it. If you used to get into some kind of a street altercation, some kind of a fight, and you had a black belt in karate or one of these martial kung fu and aikido and all, all, all this different stuff, you you would be charged differently because your hands were believed to be deadly weapons. Judges would look at it like that. You were a dangerous guy that knew some secrets. That's why those communities to this day do not watch mixed martial arts. Karate practitioners to this day, they're not hanging up posters in their gym that there's a big pay-per-view coming up Saturday. Tune into Spike TV. Watch Joe Warren on Friday night. They're not doing that. They don't want their students to know anything to know about it. They want them to believe you can break boards and crush bricks. Be a registered deadly weapon. If you just pay enough money and stay in this long enough and get a dark enough belt. That's what they want you to believe. The boxing community. Which I could fit into my car. Not literal. Don't tweet me about that. But you get my point. They're scared. They are very scared. And Teddy Atlas talked about this. It was at the end. He said, ah, Floyd's going to annihilate him. Floyd's too fast. Floyd's too good. Floyd's this. Floyd's that. The other thing. I agree with Teddy. I fully agree with Teddy. But he did close 
a little bit hesitant to say, look, Floyd hasn't been in there in a while. This is a young guy. You know, I, we can sit here all we want and say that Conor McGregor's not ready for this. And he's not. He's not. It doesn't make any kind of sense to say that he is. But the intangibles, the things that you can't put on paper, the things that you can't write down, that you can't look at, that you can't roll video back of previous fights, those things are the biggest problem. And they lean towards Connor. If you want to talk about who can deal with pressure, and Floyd does a great job. Floyd does a great job. It's Connor. Who can change weight classes? It's Connor. Why couldn't he change sports? Errol Hawani said something. Errol Hawani said something. He said, Chael, I, I'm taking Connor. He and I were talking. I said, come on, Ariel, come on. What are you, what are you talking about? And he said, well, Chael, nothing about this fight makes sense. Why should the outcome? And I had no response. I don't agree with them, but I couldn't respond to it. I did not have the rhetorical skills. He's right. Nothing about this makes sense. All of this comes down to this point. I was, uh, I woke up this morning, headline, 95, this came from a bookie, from a bookie in Las Vegas. 95% of the money wagered so far has been on Connor. Should Connor pull the upset? It will be the biggest bath the casinos have taken. They are going to get crushed. 95%. Now, I assumed more was coming in on Connor, but I didn't know it, it was skewed that much. And don't forget, the Irish fans aren't even here yet. They're not going to be here till Thursday. Some will, some will fly in today. Most of them don't come in till tomorrow. More will come in Friday, just in time. They're bringing money in their pockets. They haven't walked up to the windows yet. This line could drop to two to one right now. Put this in perspective for you. Right now, at four and a half to one, that is the closest spread of any Floyd Mayweather fight in three years, which takes him over the span of six fights. None of his last six opponents had closer odds to beat him. People think it's going to be Connor. They think Connor's the one. Think he's too big. He's too strong. Think he's too powerful. Think he's going to knock him out. Not just beat him. Knock him out. Beat him in the most decisive way you possibly can in this sport. When this fight got announced, the odds came out. It was 26 to 1 Floyd Mayweather. Almost overnight, that got cut in half. Over the span of a few weeks, that went to seven to one. A twenty-six to one spread dropped to a seven to one spread. It then dropped to six to one. It is now at four and a half to one, and Ireland isn't here yet. They are not being represented. This fight, I believe, this is a bold prediction by me, but I think I'm right. I think it's going to go to three to one. And if I'm right about the Irish money coming in, guys, it could go to two to one. That might be two and a half, but it could go to two to one. For a guy who has never boxed versus a guy who has never lost at boxing. And we got to take the excuses off the table. We just have to. Boxing is defending itself as a sport and as a brand. And the integrity of boxing has been called into question for many years. Largely because of the corruption it used to go through. Largely. But also, still to this day, the NCAA, they don't contest it. They don't recognize it as a real sport. There's not a high school in this country that contests it because they don't recognize it as a real sport. The International Olympic Committee that comes to you with the most integrity does. That's the good news. But that's the only piece of good news the sport has. And if they go down on Saturday, and that's what's on the line, and I don't think that story is being told enough, that's what this is about. Some people have tried to make this MMA versus boxing. You can do that, but that storyline's played. That storyline's played out. A younger guy versus an older guy. Storyline's played out. We've seen that a million times. We have never seen the integrity of an entire sport put on the line. That's the storyline. That's the one the promoter should have ran with. And Floyd Mayweather's trying to deflect left, right, and center. Oh, I'm not what I used to be. Oh, I'm just an old guy. Well, I'm watching Floyd. You, know, you talk about a guy got old. 
You're talking about three things. Speed, conditioning, and timing. One or more of those goes. When you hear a fighter got old, or an athlete in general got old, that's what we're talking about. I haven't seen Floyd fight. That's true. Nobody's seen him fight in two years. But I have seen him in the gym. He's done open workouts. Looks just as fast to me. Did an open workout for two hours, so I don't think we can call conditioning into this. So the third and final thing is his timing, is his eyes. Can he still get out of the way of punches? I threw punches at Teddy Atlas last night. I don't know how old Teddy Atlas is. I threw him at him last night. He slipped every damn one of them. This is what boxers do. Now, every time he slipped, yeah, he was open for a kick. Every time he slipped and pulled, I could have changed elevation and gone in for a takedown. I'm not saying it would convert for mixed martial arts. I'm just saying for boxing. These guys have that skill. People want to talk about Connor's knocking people out, but Floyd isn't. It's totally different. Connor's knocking out MMA guys. Floyd isn't knocking out boxing guys. He isn't knocking out masters of slipping and rolling and doing pulls and avoiding and countering shots. It's a totally different focus group. Totally different. So any excuse, all I'm trying to do right now, and I want you guys on board with me, we got to do away with the excuses. Whoever wins is the better boxer. That's it. This is a fair, licensed boxing contest. Agreed upon gloves, agreed upon arena, agreed upon rounds, agreed upon rule set, agreed upon opponents. Everything is fair and everything is above boards. And mark my words, if Connor wins, that story will not be told. They will make excuses. And it's not right. It's absolutely not right. I can remember my own first fight with Anderson Silva. I told anybody that would listen, I'm going to destroy this guy and it won't be close. And I was doing that because I knew I was going to destroy him and I knew what the media would do. They would try to take it from me. They would try to make excuses. So the fight goes on and Anderson gets destroyed. Sure enough, the media came out with Anderson was hurt. He had a rib injury. I couldn't, I couldn't get that due. I couldn't get that pat on the back. And we're not going to let it happen to Connor. We're not going to take it from him. If Connor loses, it's because Floyd's better. If Connor wins, it's because Connor's better. And it doesn't have anything to do with age. Connor's 29 years old. When Floyd beat Canelo, Canelo was 21. I think Floyd was 37. I think that fight was three years ago. Could have been 38. I think he was 37. You guys get the point. Don't bring up that age. Canelo was much bigger. Don't bring up that size. Floyd had been out for a year. In this case, he's been out too. Don't bring any of that up. None of it's relevant. None of it's fair. None of it's true. One guy gets credit here. Both guys putting it on the line in different ways. But one guy gets the credit, whoever it is. Whether it's Floyd or whether it's Connor. But that's fair.